of PIEs. Uh, we we'll start with the short leg, so let's say that we have a right short, <coughs> bring it into flexion, it balances out, it crosses over, and becomes longer, and if it's look like true pelvic problem, you're going to get some resistance on that short leg side. We'll bring them back down, we'll instruct the patient to rotate the face right, center, left, center, and the short leg stays short. So we know that we have a uh, pelvic positive PI on that right side. So we'll separate these a little bit, stand on the opposite side of the PI, we'll set the table to release, we'll find the inferior PSIS, palpate that should be tenderness at the top of the joint, the tissue pull is inferior to superior, you can use either hand to make your contact with, we'll drive it toward the shoulder, we'll find the opposite uh, issue tube, stabilize that side, and thrust P to A, I to A. Okay? If it was PIIN, then we would just change the line of drive slightly. It would be more on the medial part of the PSIS. Roll in, stabilize the thrust. Okay? If it was PIEX, <coughs> then we would stand on the same side. We'll still at about 45 degrees for this one. This time the tissue pull is lateral to medial out of S. We'll roll in, stabilize, and thrust. Okay? And you can use either your fist or your nail point eight or pisces form to stabilize. So after we've made the adjustment, and if a correction is, has been made, then the leg should balance out. We'll bring them into flexion and they'll still balance. <clears throat> we'll instruct the patient now to rotate the face right, center, left, center, and they stay balanced. And now we'll just post pad. Okay? So if you should get that move, either one rows, that's what you'll be expected to do. Pre-check, setup, and post-check. Pelvic positive supine correction. Okay, let's say that we have a left short. We bring it into flexion and it crosses over and becomes longer or it balances out and we're not getting as much resistance. <coughs> we'll check cervical syndrome, right, center, left, center, you don't have to turn here, I'll just mention it. Okay. So there's no change with the cervicals. Palpate uh, for the uh, tenderness at the top of the joint. But instead of doing a prone correction, we want to do a supine correction. Bring the patient up. So the patient goes from the prone position to the supine position, the first thing that you do is check the spinal balance. Okay. So we still have the left short. <coughs> we'll do the lumb uh, fossa test on the ASIS now until we get least resistance. And then she lets her arm relax. Okay. Uh, let's put your thumb in your belly button, please. <coughs> Right at the center there, almost at that first digit there. Palpate, pivot to the superior, the table is set to drop. We'll roll in with the superior hand, knife edge, fingers pointing toward the opposite foot, like thrust. Okay. A to P, S to I. We check the spinal balance, and if we made a correction at this point, they should be balanced, okay? But if we know that we still have some I or EX, we'll go ahead and fix that. Stand on either side for either one of those, okay? If it's EX, we'll do the figure four. Set the drop, we'll go straight down, thrust. And if it's nine in, we'll lift the foot completely off the table, move it medial, get on the ASIS with nail point eight, and thrust 
back down the shaft of the leg. And let me see, you can do it on the opposite side if you would like to, your choice. So at this point, the legs are balanced. Uh, the rotation is taken care of. And we'll put the patient back in the front position. are also balanced in the prone position, we'll bring them into flexion, and they remain balanced, we'll bring them back down, she turns her face right, center, left, <coughs> center, and they stay balanced, and we just slow it down. Okay. Probably positive supine correction. Question about that one? Okay. Probably negative. Uh, we we'll do the uh, one part uh, with uh, either I and EX, okay? Probably negative. Different misalignment, the ilia and the sacrum is inferior on either side. Okay, it's not a PI. <clears throat> so if we're doing it on the right side, the right leg is short. We'll bring it into flexion. It stays short. It may even get shorter. Patient will take your face right, center, left, center, and there's no change. So we know that we don't have a cervical bar. Check trigger points. Costal vertebral, sub-occipital. And we need to have trigger points positive above and below the waist, okay? Proceed with the adjustment. And I say that we do. <coughs> we'll set the table to release. And uh, if you have a table that drops in three different directions, we'll set the pelvic section to drop down and forward. A lot of ideas on this one. Palpate the issue tube. Roll in with the pice hand, the inferior hand. Ideas straight up towards the shoulder. <coughs> we'll check the spinal balance. And if they're balanced, then we'll go into flexion, head rotation, and post trigger point. If we still have some rotation, either I or EX, we'll fix that. So if it's EX, <coughs> this time the stance is squared, okay? We'll find the PSIS, stabilize, and thrust on the EX side. If it's IN, then we'll get on the opposite side. The stance is still squared. This time we're on the medial PSIS. Stabilize and thrust with the drop. <coughs> At this point, the legs should still be balanced. The rotation is taken care of. <coughs> we'll do the post check. We'll bring them into flexion, and they are still balanced. She rotates her face right, left, center, and they remain balanced. Now we'll post check. Cover negative, one part or pelvic negative one part with I N R E X. Question about that one? Okay, two part pelvic negative uh, prong correction. Uh, short leg, I say that we have a right short. We'll bring it into flexion, it stays short or it make it shorter. <coughs> she rotates the face right, left, center, and there's no change. Check the trigger points. Two points are present, but now uh, instead of doing a prong correction, in this case, we want to do a supine correction. Okay. And the patient goes from prong position to the supine position. check the spinal balance, okay, because we still want to have the same leg short and uh, supine as well as prone. So, still
still have a right short, and we may have other trigger points that we can actually find, the great toe on the opposite side, medial and lateral cord, <coughs> postal, sternal. Okay? And, <clears throat> uh, are you okay with this being covered? Okay. So, in order to do this move, we want to push the LEO straight up, just like we've done in the prone position. And the way that we do that, we we'll flex the leg, let the foot just rest on the table, and we'll instruct the patient to just let your leg rest on the doctor's leg like that. This part of the hand is on the ASIS, nail point eight is on the inferior issue tooth. Roll in, arms level with the table almost, and we're thrusting straight up, both hands. We'll recheck the spinal balance, and if they're balanced, then we'll post-check the supine trigger points. But if we still have some rotation, then we'll go ahead and do the INAEX, okay? And then check the spinal balance. So let's say we've done the INAEX, we'll post-check the trigger point, okay? Now this one you'll have to check trigger points like right? four times. Okay, so uh, now the legs are balanced. We will bring them in, bring them into flexion, and they're still balanced. She rotates the face right, center, left, center, and they remain balanced. And we we'll just post check the prong stress point. Okay, and I think that's all that we've done. Question. Did we do? If you if you do the prone, like pushing the ilium and the sacrum straight up, how do you know that you're going to do the supine? What's the difference? Like instead well, the of negative. Yeah. That's just an option. Supine is an option. Okay, so you're going to tell. So us that's no uh, indication that tells you to do a. So okay, so check, unless you have maybe have a female that's say in a first trimester pregnancy and uh, oh, she's not large enough to do the uh, okay, so part one, well, part, two, so part one and part two are interchangeable. You can do either one just to right. know what you have. To right, do. Okay. right. But I'll tell you either prone or supine. Okay. Okay? Yeah, uh, Nicholas. Charles. Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh. Yeah, I was asking about the two parts one. Which which one is the pelvic hinge in two parts? That's we only done it from. We didn't do it two parts of the line yet. Oh, okay. I, I'm not sure. We, we may not have yeah, demonstrated that yet. Did we do that? Huh? Did we do that? No, we didn't do the supine. I didn't do that one yet. Right. But then you're saying we haven't, you haven't demonstrated how to do the two parts of prone yet. Oh, yes. I didn't? No. no. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, today. Okay. Let's say that uh, we have a right short. We bring it into flexion and stay short or it gets shorter. She rotates the fight, face right, left, center, <laughs> and uh, it stays balanced. Now we check trigger points. And <clears throat> we have enough trigger points to proceed with the adjustment, separate the knees. We'll set the table to release. We'll find the issue to thrust straight up toward the shoulder. Go back to check, oh, it's become shorter. Okay, so we need to fix that. And you can use your elbow if you would like to. And if you're using the elbow, you're still on the same side for all three uh, corrects. So if we had to fix the PI, we just lift it straight up like that. PIEX, we're getting more lateral, like that. PIIN, more like that. And we also could be on the opposite side if we have a PI. Find the PSIS, lift the leg a little bit, and thrust straight up. PIIN for the second part, or if it's PIX for the second part, okay, with the drops. Post check, the legs are now balanced. 
will bring them into flexion and they are balanced. She rotates her face right center, left center, and they are balanced. Let's check three. Okay. It's prone too far. 